Hi, I'm Tom Neckfell, and I'm here to show you how to adjust the head for different tones and different tone components in your Neckfell banjo. So I'm going to take the head and uh, crank it up a little bit for a bluegrass song. Um, that was a nice mellow tone for a waltz. I think I'm going to uh, spark this banjo up a little bit with a little snugger head. Now with the Gila Mount banjo, we're going to actually lift the surface of the head somewhat and so you'll be raising the action slightly as we tighten the head. It's good to keep that in mind but I'll show you what I mean. Let me take the resonator off and I put two screws in for convenience. Normally there's four thumb screws. Now I'm going to turn the banjo over on the table and show you the inside of the Gila mount. Here is the wrenches that come with the banjo. Any two of the six holes will do. I'm going to give you a hint uh, before I even start. A new product we have is Gila Mount Grease and it's good for the threads of the Neckville banjo. If you take it completely apart like I'll do later, I'll show you how to use the grease inside. But just for a preview on the usefulness of this grease, I'll put a little bit on the tips of these wrenches and then it'll help uh, it'll help us in the uh, tightening and loosening of the head. Now before I go any farther I want to do something. What if I like that tone and I want to save that position? Let me put a little piece of tape right where we started. Okay, a little arrow piece of tape. Now I'm gonna go in a direction that seems the wrong way but notice I'm turning the wrenches counterclockwise and the whole banjo is turning clockwise. This is a cyclotronic rim system. There's ball bearings underneath the rim, between the rim and the tone ring in here. You can't see them, but they're in there. Now, a couple more cranks. When it gets tight, it's uh, normal that it should offer some resistance when you get up to bluegrass tension. You can use different holes, doesn't matter which ones, but sometimes a small crank in this hole and then a small crank in the next hole and perhaps uh, go back to the original hole and keep that process up until it's as snug as you feel is ready for a, uh, an experiment. So uh, one more for good measure so you can t actually tell the difference in tone. Bear in mind that it's going to be sharp uh, or somewhat um, out of tune as we, uh, as we put it back. I could keep going. I could make it sound extremely bright and tight, but of course uh, my action might get a little too high to play, in which case uh, you can watch another video on angling the neck so, uh, so that you can achieve different heights and low action with even a very tight head and a tall bridge. So. Uh, We'll get more into that after a little while, but first I'll put this back together and tune it back up to the standard pitch of G. And uh, I want to show you the tuner I'm using is the IMT500. And there's a little TV screen on there that gives me the, uh, the tuning. I think uh, I'm gonna be sharp. It's a G sharp. I'm going to tune it down. And I don't spend too much time getting each string perfect. I want to get it roughly in tune first. And then I'll go back and do it again. I call it two stage tuning. just happens to be right on. Just a, a clue on tuning. If you're dropping all of your strings, you may want to drop the first one a little bit more than you'd really normally tune it because when you drop the next strings, the tension on the bridge is going to lift up that first string a little bit because you're relaxing the tension on the other strings and that'll cause the head to push up and it'll make that first string that you just loosened even tighter. And so uh, you can anticipate that as you, 
as you uh, tune the strings, and it makes for a little bit of, uh, of time saving in tuning. Let's try this. I can tell the difference already. Yeah, so the mistakes weren't the banjo's fault. Uh, that was uh, lack of practice. Now here's, uh, here's the uh, Neckville Neckstar, set up for bluegrass, and uh, I'm going to show you next uh, how to change the head. Okay, we're going to take the tone components out of the banjo and show you inside. So I'll take the resonator off again. I've previously removed the thumb screws. And I'm going to expose the back and put it open on my lap. And before I start to turn the tension on this ring, notice uh, I've put a piece of tape to mark the original position of the flange ring. You want the tape to be on the part that moves. That's the black part. Uh, don't put it necessarily on the wood part because if you take the, the wood and the ring apart, uh, the tape shouldn't stick to the to the wood part. It should stay on the metal part. I've made that mistake before. So uh, we'll go clockwise with this and actually screw this out counterclockwise because the unscrewing motion is opposite from the way I'm turning because of the way the gears work. Notice the two-handled method of uh, loosening and tightening. You need both wrenches when you're up to high tensions on the head, only one wrench when it is beginning to get loose, and then when it gets extremely loose like it is now, we should be able to spin this ring out with a little assistance from perhaps a, uh, a screwdriver to save a little, oops, sorry, to save a little time. or you can use the tip of your wrench to get it loose. Now, I'm going to pull out the tone ring and set it on the table. That's your tone ring, rim, and flange. Notice the, I, I know you can't see it in the video, but there are teeth on this piece that should be clean, just like you brush your teeth. You might brush these teeth as well, just to keep them clean. Notice I still got my index mark here, so I know where to return it to when I get it tightened back up again. Hopefully we should still be in tune. Um, the strings are tuned to pitch, but uh, there's, no, there's no tone ring in there right now. So I'm going to take the bridge out so it doesn't fall on the floor. And then I'm going to take the head out. I've got the armrest holding the head in right now. Can you see this? I'll just put a little Phillips screwdriver in here and release the comfort bevel armrest. Take out my head and inspect the head. If you're going to take it apart, make sure there's nothing wrong with your instrument, like a crack along the side of the head. Uh, make sure it's not broken. Make sure it's not overly stretched out. This is a fairly high crown head. They come in different heights. Um, for the neck fill banjo, you want to use a medium or high crown. Low crown, I would not recommend. But uh, let me show you some other kinds of heads. Of course, the white Remo frosted on the top is the most common. And this is a popular head. It's called a Renaissance head and uh, medium crown Renaissance head. Let's see how it looks in the, in the neck fill. It's got a nice warm glow to it. Uh, we might uh, think about something entirely different and go with a black head. All of these heads are available from Neckville, and uh, they don't have logos on them so that uh, you really don't have to advertise anybody if you don't want to. I like, I like the look of the black, but uh, if you ever put a black one in, 
get it nice and tight. They sound really, really good when they're really, really tight, but it takes a little extra cranking to get them up to that uh, where, where they sound their best. So um, let's, uh, let's try an electric head. This would be something uh, for the alternative banjoist. If you don't want to be a banjoist, you'd rather play electric guitar, there's no problem. Uh, you can do that with your neck fill banjo as well. Um, this is uh, something that uh, I'm not really advertising, but uh, through the Banjo Revolution Association, you can, you can get whatever you want at neck fill. Let's put our original banjo back together. I'll grab this head, putting it back in with the uh, feet in the same location about there and uh, I'll take a moment to show you the tone ring and rim that we have here. This is the uh, bronze tone ring on the top. Make sure you don't pull the, the tone ring off of the rim in this direction or the, you'll have a big surprise. A lot of tone spheres will fall out and roll all over the floor. What I mean is if you open it this way you can see that there are 80 ball bearings that uh, is, is causing the rolling uh, of the Gila mount. When we, when we tighten this up, we have a low friction interface created and it also causes the tone ring to vibrate uh, in a uh, unimpeded way with, with hard surfaces to mount the tone ring on and uh, really sounds fantastic. So uh, before we put this together, I'm going to check and make sure that there's no debris caught in the threads. I may want to take a toothbrush on the inside and on the outside. And before I put it back together, I use a little dab of my Gila mount grease and put a little bit. This has been previously greased, so I don't need too much. But I will spread that around on the inside of the threads. And when I put in my mating piece, it will distribute the uh, the grease out and it will uh, make for a little bit easier tightening. Now make sure that everything is seated properly. You don't have any straps or any uh, wires from your pickup or anything caught in there. And then when it's seated properly you can you can turn this ring until you hear a click. Ah, I heard a click. That means the threads are engaged. Now I'm going to start turning it by hand you saw me take it apart and I used the screwdriver to do that. I don't recommend that. I do think that if you just put your wrenches in, you might be able to twist it tighter like this a little bit. But uh, the easiest way is to just put in the wrenches and do it as intended. And uh, we'll start getting tension on the head in no time. Well, that's, that's not quite, you can hardly feel any tension on there yet, but pretty soon they'll engage. I'll put in two wrenches and when we start feeling resistance we'll know that the head is is getting tighter. This is a relatively high crown head. A, low, a lower crown or a medium crown would uh, start in, engaging and tightening much more quickly. But Okay, give me a moment here. Now it's starting to tighten up. And once it starts to tighten up, every full rotation of this ring is about 0 0.08 of an inch. It's like one twelfth of an inch for every go around. We're actually raising the head up and we're tightening it up. Now, what did I do? I, took, I went already past my arrow point pretty tight. I obviously can go much tighter, but if I return the arrow to where we started, which was adjacent to the neck connection, and I put my bridge back in, we should still be in tune. Let me just lift the strings up, return the bridge to the same spot. Excuse me. A little clumsy there. Put the bridge. Put the bridge in the right spot. Another hint 
is to pre-mark the bridge with the little pencil mark once you get it in the proper spot. So here we are, pretty, pretty close to being in tune still. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about Gila Mount Banjo setup. Uh, with this setup, it's really a warm and uh, rather loose head and a tall bridge, giving it a full, nice round sound. And I'm going to really tighten the head up dramatically and just uh, so we can see a difference. I like the action where it's at. It's got good, nice little action. Now when I tighten it up with the tall bridge, of course, the whole head will lift and it'll, it'll boost the head up. So I have another, you may want to have a collection of Enterprise bridges. Notice they're compensated and on the bottom they're weighed and measured. Uh, this one's 2.3 grams. The one that's on here is about 2.9 grams. So 2.3 is a good one for bluegrass, bright sound. This is more of a Bella Fleck type of a 7 8 inch tall bridge. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to a bluegrassy setup. And here's how you do it. You move the resonator, crank the head up again. This time uh, I do have my original point there. I think that I can go perhaps all the way around or maybe three quarters of the way around. I know that uh, the Gila mount has a long range of tonal possibilities. So that's one, almost one quarter of the way. I might be able to get a half of the way around which would be approximately 0 0.04, about a 32nd of an inch, perhaps. Um, you can tell I'm putting more force on this as it's getting tighter and tighter. And don't be afraid to put some muscle to the Gila mount. When you get up to the high tensions, these, uh, these were engineered to take to take quite a bit of uh, tensioning. Just make sure that your wrenches are all the way inserted and that you're going to different holes and uh, turn it as long as it feels like it's smoothly turning. I've gone more than halfway now. Most of the bluegrass guys I know will take these up to fairly, fairly high. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I've gone about two-thirds of the way around, and uh, we'll see if uh, if the action isn't just a little too high. Yeah, the action is a little high. Before I tune this too much, I think I'll try a different bridge. If you have one bridge on, it's easy to slip another bridge in and just tilt, tilt the bridges in and out from laying down in the forward position, then, then turn them up. Uh, it's better than turning it from this direction because then you wear out the front edge of your bridge slots. So we'll move this into position, making sure we're in the right slots. And I've got nice low action now. A note about the tailpiece. We have uh, an adjustable tailpiece on the neckfilt banjo. It can be adjusted left and right and somewhat up and down. Uh, there's a wrench that comes with your, it's a small wrench that will fit on the bottom screw here. And if you release this, you can cause the natural tension to pull that tailpiece up. And you want to go just to the point where it, it tightens up and then leave it right there. If you have a tall bridge on, you might want to allow it all the way up. If you have a short bridge, you might want to give this a little bit extra crank down just to hold it. Now I'm going to tune it up. And I'll put the resonator on so you can hear the difference. If you get it too tight, uh, you kind of constrict 
the warmth, but uh, it's very hard to get it, so it sounds uh, less than good. I mean, I, I like all ranges of. That's uh, that's a bluegrassy sound. Now to fine tune this still I would probably go with a little taller bridge. I didn't lift it up quite as far as I was intending to and so you get a little bit of the rattle up on the up on the high strings but that's easily adjusted through another adjustment which is you got to see our other video on neck adjustments. You can angle the neck forward for higher action, angle the neck back for lower action. So. Uh, Thank you. Now that you have a neck fill banjo, you have a whole world of possibilities for tone components that could be added on later to your instrument. So, uh, for example, we talked about different kinds of heads, different kinds of tone rings are possible as well. And we've been doing a lot of work lately with lighter weight options. So here's a preview of one of our new ideas. It's a Cocobolo tone ring and uh, this replaces the tone ring that's in the cyclotronic uh, ball bearing system in the standard Gila mount and uh, a ring like this uh, is available for about the same cost as the metal ring but it's about uh, half less than half of the weight so you're you're saving a couple of pounds uh, and it's very noticeable in your in playing so uh, you, you know how easy it is to take it apart now and you don't have to be shy about uh, experimenting with your neck fill and uh, call me by all means if you have any further questions on it. Right now we're going to get along and uh, do a little bit of picking. So we'll see you later.